part of government's Vision 2030 national policy document, the maritime industry has been identified as one of the key areas of new economic expansion and diversification. On Friday, 7th September 2018, the government of Trinidad and Tobago hosted a signing ceremony for a cooperation agreement for the development of a dry docking facility at La Bray with state-owned China Harbor Engineering Company Limited. Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island sovereign state that is the southernmost nation in the Caribbean. Approximately 31,000 voyages pass within 25 nautical miles of Trinidad and Tobago each year transiting the Panama Canal en route between the east coast of South America and the Pacific seaboard of the USA, between the west coast of South America and the Atlantic seaboard of the USA and Europe. The recent expansion of the Panama Canal will increase the already growing demand for ship repair and maintenance in the Caribbean region, which needs more shipyards capable of handling large vessels. The La Brea Dry Dock Project is therefore poised to capture the South American and Panamanian shipping traffic, as well as the very common offshore platform activities in this region. According to China Harbor Engineering Company's master plan, the La Brea Dry Dock Project will have two dry docks and 15 berths, occupying a total of 361 hectares. The first phase of the project includes two dry docks and one berth, for maintenance and repair of vessels up to the new Panamax size and the offshore platforms. The project is impressive in its scale, with a number of construction objectives to be fulfilled, including two dry docks, a pier, dredging the navigation access channel, turning circle and berth basin, land reclamation, revetments, workshops, office buildings, a training center, accommodation, support facilities and utilities, and access roads. For Trinidad and Tobago, the La Brea Dry Dock Project is projected to generate approximately 500 million U.S. dollars for the economy annually, a direct addition of 2.4 percent to the annual GDP by the fourth year of operations. At the local level, the construction and operation of the dry dock at La Brea will lead to localization of companies in the industries that provide support services to the shipyard, including, but not limited to, the steel processing, paints and lubricants production, electromechanical equipment supplying. Likewise, the corresponding increase in demand for lodging, catering, medical, entertainment, and other services will definitely boost the local economy. Beyond the physical infrastructure, the La Brea Dry Dock Project is set to galvanize the local economy by empowerment through training. The shipyard operator will cooperate with the local institutes, like the University of Trinidad and Tobago, to train local professionals and transfer technology to local partners in the shipbuilding and associated industries. During the four-year construction phase, 3,500 direct and 5,700 indirect jobs will be created. The operational phase will see 3,700 direct and 13,000 indirect jobs created. Therefore, the dry dock project will become the backbone of the economy of La Brea and diversify the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, delivered the feature address at the signing ceremony. Today, what this presentation signals is the arrival in our economy of a real possibility for diversification. We talk a lot about diversification and the need to diversify. But usually the conversation ends there. Yes, we agree we have to diversify. Yes, we agree that we are too dependent on, on, the, on the hydrocarbon sector alone, and we are too exposed, and we need to do other things. And then for years we talk about some of the other things. And one of the things we've been talking about is the fact that we could diversify into the maritime sector. But this government has decided to do whatever we have to do to move from talk to action. Because we identified the film industry as an area, we have identified tourism as an area, but we need to move from identification to execution. And in the case of the tourism sector, you know what we are doing with respect to raising Tobago's profile and moving towards execution there. 
with the film industry, we're still hoping that we will find some things to, to, to launch us in a big way into producing in Trinidad and Tobago one or two films that would uh, get worldwide acclaim because that's how you launch the industry. But here on the maritime side, for the last year, we have been working on this project. And that is why I would like to re-emphasize my acknowledgement of the Chinese ambassador and our technical people for working on this project. But there were some issues that had to be dealt with to move the project from tabletop and from talk to where we are today. And the main thing that had to be done is that those at the top who make the decision need to be sensitized as to what this project means for Trinidad and Tobago and why it ought to be supported. And it's against that background that I led a team to China a few months ago to speak directly to the leadership in China and to tell them how important this project is to Trinidad and Tobago and to impress upon them that we need a greater investment of the in Trinidad and Tobago and the presence of the Chinese community in Trinidad and Tobago ought to move from being contractors who build for us on contract or those who have been here and who continue to look around the world that we should look to China but China must also look to Trinidad and Tobago. I took that message to the Premier of China and the President of China and both leaders agreed that they will support what Trinidad and Tobago is trying to do to diversify our economy. The groundwork that we had done allowed us to present a credible argument and a credible case. And I'm impressed by the speed at which we have moved from that stage to where we are now. Full commitment. And what is significant in this project is that it is not just a project being built for the people of Trinidad and Tobago by a Chinese contractor, one of the largest companies in China and in the world by that place. But we did indicate to the Chinese that there are certain pitfalls in a small country like us getting involved in such a large project and then waiting for the world to come to us. There are serious risks in that. And the you know, elephants come in a variety of colors. Some are brown, some are black, some are white. And the white ones you want to avoid at all costs. So we decided, we told the Chinese that while we acknowledge this project, to have tremendous potential for Trinidad and Tobago. We want to go into it comfortably, without the fear of failure. And that situation can only be arrived at if the Chinese partner with us in this project. So that when it is built, we don't have to wait for other people's vessels to come to this facility. But if the owners have vessels that require this facility, then that should guarantee business for this facility. Against that background, the Chinese company is offered to take a 30% equity in this business. <laughs> so the equity structure in this business would be 30% Chinese, 70% Trinidad and Tobago. And the reason for doing that is that we know of the Thousands of ships that pass close to us, many of which pass through Trinidad and Tobago. Because the owners of this facility own a lot of those vessels, or have influence with the owners of those vessels, many of them taking cargo to and from the second largest economy in the world, which is China, that once this facility is built, there will be a huge amount of self-interest in getting those vessels to come to Trinidad and Tobago. The cabinet that is here this morning, the members of the cabinet, would have discussed, would have accepted that we need to focus and push this. Because what we are leveraging here for our benefit is the geography of Trinidad and Tobago. There are persons who very frequently tell us 
that as a small country we should be like Singapore. Well, Singapore is one of the most successful countries in the world, enjoying one of the highest standards of living. There are two things that made that so. One is the geographical location of Singapore, the gateway between Australasia and Europe. Geography, where it is located. And secondly, the behavior and attitude of the people in treating with the world. When you put those two things together, Singapore moved from being a little island nation, Commonwealth nation like itself. But when you put those two things together, you see the huge potential for Trinidad and Tobago. Look at the map of the world, look at the shape of our territory, look at our neighbor, and you see the Gulf of Paria is one of the safest and most distinguishable features. Comfortable, quiet sea anywhere in the world. And it lies just east of the hugely trafficked Panama Canal, which links the Pacific Ocean <coughs> and the South America and the East Coast of the United States as well as Europe. That location of Trinidad and Tobago, if not as good as, is almost as, or even better than the not sure yet. But all of those, all of those descriptions could apply to the location of Trinidad and Tobago with respect to maritime traffic. And as you know recently, with the extension of the Panama Canal, vessels that are traveling <coughs> between the Atlantic and the Pacific are larger and larger. Huge vessels are now the norm. And those large vessels, many of them Chinese vessels, taking cargo to and from China, will have the need for dry docking. Trinidad and Tobago, this is our time. And we are grasping it with both hands. And that is what this project is about. This project will have a certain amount of financing requirement. And I can tell you, in our discussions with the Chinese, we have been reminded that a large number of the world's largest banks are Chinese. And we expect that the funding would be easily available. It was mentioned by Mr. George this morning that um, the, the operators will get involved in the feasibility study. I could say that we've gone well past the feasibility stage on this project. We are very close to the um, signing of the execution. What this is this morning is introducing to the national community what is on the table about to move on to the ground. In the concept of the public-private partnership, the government puts in the land, the government puts in the, the, the maritime asset, the government takes financial equity, in the project and so on. This is a classic case of all the moving parts coming together to create something for the mutual benefit of all. And how does this diversify the economy? For a start, it is not oil, it is not gas, and therefore it's different. Most importantly, much of what will go on in this project would be done in US dollars. Virtually every ship that comes into this harbor, that comes into this dry dock facility, will pay for all the services in foreign currency. So this project would be a huge foreign currency owner. Secondly, given the nature of the activities that will go on in this business, it is so welcome in the southern, south land of Trinidad and Tobago. I started with the Calypso because I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember. I just barely can remember. Oh, I was told <laughs> that there was a time when Brighton and Labrie had the best nightlife in Trinidad and Tobago. And a lot of Calypsoians cut their teeth in clubs in Brighton when Brighton was an industrial center in Trinidad. Well, what we have in this country is a pool of skills to which this kind of business is not unfamiliar. 
And there are a lot of men, and I, and my dear say, some women too, for whom the skills that are required in this business would be skills that they are completely comfortable with. Because when ships come in for that dry docking, there's a whole range of services required, from welding to blasting to engineering, electrical works, to all kinds of skills. I had the opportunity when I visited China to visit one of these yards in operation and a yard that mirrors this one. And I can tell you that everything, all the components that are required to make this a workable operation are exactly what Trinidad Tobago needs at this time. And the government's timing of this, of bringing it together, is not accidental. We drove to this place knowing that as we are about to lose some jobs in point of pay in this kind of business, we are talking about creating 5,000 jobs in library in this kind of business. And I have absolutely no doubt that a large number of people who will walk away with a separation check at Pointe Pair will end up in La Brie, Point 14, somewhere bringing their skills and bringing their contribution to this one of the first industries that we are opening up in La Brie in this period. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what diversification is about. It is about doing all that you can with what you currently have. Because we are working just as hard in preserving our position in gas and in oil. But also adding to the economic pie. Doing things that you have not done before and growing the national economy. There are very few projects that anybody in this country could point to. And to the best of my knowledge could have, could have pointed to that at the presentation stage could feasibly, reasonably, and believably say to the country, if we do this, we will have the effect of growing our economy in one fell swoop by seven plus percent. Ladies and gentlemen, that is no small leap. To grow our GDP by seven percent through one project which is not in the same area of oil and gas, is probably the best news ever given to the people of Trinidad and Tobago since we set out to diversify. <laughs> I have not seen all the engineering numbers yet, and I'm sure those numbers will be available in the coming weeks. But the quantum of material that would be required and the specific number of man hours required in the specific skill areas will all be impressive. Because this process, this process of bringing this business here has a tremendous knock-on effect on shore. Only recently, I have been talking to the Minister of Housing, who has been very busy in the last few weeks, looking around the Labre area and having already identified the sites where we need to explode our housing construction because the demand for housing in this area would grow considerably in the very near future. The people who come to work, you have been told, there will be a large population of people coming here who, when they bring the vessels in, they have to pretty much change over here or reside here or come to provide skills and they will have to be fed, they have to be entertained, they have to be housed. So the community of Labrie Point 14 would see a face change for the better. I am particularly pleased to be taking part in this ceremony this morning for the people of Labre, because Labre happens to be one of the areas which has suffered most and has not been benefiting as much as it should have as the rest of the nation has moved forward. This area of Labre, when we do the, we do the social, socio-economic surveys, Labre and the Eastern County in San Fernando, San Gregandi, sorry, usually come out as the two areas in the country which are furthest back on the scale of our development. This project and similar projects in the pipeline are pursued with the deliberate intention 
of not only growing the national economy, but bringing to Labre opportunities for the people of Labre who are now poised to experience the kind of growth and the kind of production and the kind of benefit that they have not experienced for quite a while. Having said that, I want to talk to the people of Labre. Minister Khan came down here a few months ago. He called you all in, where was it? In Vesini. And he told you all to cooperate with the government's activities in trying to bring business to the brain. So far, we have lost good business in the brain because of the attitude and behavior of some people who decide if they can't get one more egg in the nest, they're going to mash up the hen house. People of the brain, I'm appealing to you to not label yourself as a place of low production and industrial mischief, but a place of excellence that the world is looking to. <laughs> this business is not a local business, it's not a Trinidad and Tobago business. Once you step into this business, you stepped into the world. When a vessel leaves any port anywhere in the world and is going to Labre, the world is talking to Labre, talking to you. And if what comes out from Labre is the uncertainty about delivery, uncertainty about performance, uncertainty about cost, then they will pass you by. And then when that happens, and you go out to say the government and do nothing for Labre, and the government and do nothing for we, and where the land do, and where all they do, you will have nobody but yourself to blame. We would have done it. Because this facility, when built here, and I'm asking you all to get it built, get it built. When it is built here, it then will have to begin to compete with the places where the ships go now. Because ships go somewhere now, you know. All those ships go somewhere to get their haul-out services done. When we build it here, we will have to compete. We will be competing for some of that business. And when you're competing, you have to offer attractive terms to bring the business to you. Because you see, nobody owes us anything. We have to earn it. And we earn it every day by giving service for what is going to be paid for that service. And in this business, what you do that competition is that you have to offer quality service. You have to offer service at a price. And you have to offer to keep that price. And you have to offer to do the work up to the highest standard that is required. And when you do that, you very quickly build up a reputation of delivering that. And that brings more and more services. And of course, we have two bays in this project. So that we can handle two ships at a time, we hope that we'll do it so well that soon after, the economic prosperity that would have come would drive us to look at more bays so we can handle more ships. Because the natural strength of Labre, its geography, its physiography, and its people, those are our strengths. We're marrying the geography, we're marrying the people of China and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I look forward, God willing, to coming back here in the not too distant future, to break down on the project, and to come again to watch the first ship, wherever that ship is, that will sail into this harbor and to climb in to the dockyard of La Brie Dry Dock. I want to thank all the persons, wherever they are, who would have worked on this project. And I want to thank the members of my cabinet for staying the course. And I want to thank those in China who have received us so well when we visited. And we look forward to this as the first 
of a significant investment by the people of China in the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you very much. Thank you.